Reverse 1999 has one of the best character designs I've ever seen in gaming. In fact, it's so good I somehow found myself spending an entire day researching about a department store, a volcano demon, a $3.7 billion auction house, and an indestructible legendary sword, all because of my initial curiosity around these innocent sunglasses. And the more I went down this rabbit hole, I started to realize that every single character in this game were meticulously designed to mirror their respective eras and historical events. But but before we talk about all the cool design choices and these characters, let's start from the beginning. The Sunglasses This is Regulus, one of the main characters in the story from the United Kingdom. Now to give you a bit of context, because the time flows backwards in this game, it allows us to travel throughout the history of the 20th century, and Regulus here is from the 1960s. Initially, I thought Regulus was just a quirky character and nothing more, until I got interested in her sunglasses for some crazy reason, which was described in detail within her character profile, and it's said that Regulus bought her sunglasses from Herod's in London. Now to be honest, I had no idea what Harrods was so I googled it and apparently it's a real life historical department store in London with a history of 170 years. Now at this point it was really interesting to even see a real life reference within Regulus's design and it got me wondering. If the developers intentionally put these small and interesting lore for characters, were there any more? So out of my curiosity, I proceeded to spend an entire day researching these small details and wondered if there were any clues. We had a pretty decent starting point. She was from the 1960s. As it turns out, the 1960s in the United Kingdom were referred to as the swinging 60s. And during this time, a new wave of fashion was being introduced with the idea of freedom and affordability. Things like mini skirt dresses and white go-go boots were very popular at this time. And sure enough, these things were clearly visible within Regulus's character design. Not only that, but during the 60s in the UK, modern jazz and R&B were making its mark in history which eventually led to a clash with rock and roll. Which is really cool if you think about it because just how much Regulus is seen literally evangelizing rock and roll throughout the entire story. And also during the 60s, motor scooters or what we commonly know as Vespas were also extremely popular which can also be seen reflected in her design. And even things like pirate radio station that she operated on her ship. It directly aligns with the United Kingdom's history in the 60s where pirate radio DJs would broadcast from international waters to play pop and rock music which was not catered by bbc radio services at the time now if we circle all the way back to her sunglasses we could even potentially find out what brand sunglasses she was wearing using historical timeline and trends in the 1960s in my personal opinion there's a high probable chance that regular sunglasses were a reflection of a designer brand called oliver goldsmith because judging from the appearance and pricing they look pretty similar but that's of course if we disregard the idea of a inflation and currency exchange but from all this i could really feel just how much the developers reverse 1999 really cared when designing all these characters in the game even this fictional mysterious floating apple seems to have some context in real life history as well when i first thought of apple under the historical lens it made me think of i don't know isaac newton and gravity and when we think about the apple under the religious perspective the story of adam and eve and if we're just speculating and if i were to consider a possible possible common thread between these two things, it could be simplified with the idea of knowledge and curiosity, and in the game of Reverse 1999, this Apple, or Mr. Apple, is constantly described in a mysterious context with knowledge and intelligence as its main focal point. And I thought that was pretty cool. And the best part was that these interesting references of real life and design choices are showcased throughout other characters as well. For instance, we have Sotheby. Sotheby is a well-educated and wealthy character during the 1920s. She carries around a doll named Typhon, which was named after a literal volcano demon in Greek mythology. She also wears designer heels created by Daedalus made from gems of Corona Borealis. Again, everything referring to Greek mythology, which I thought was really cool. It really showcases the intention behind Sotheby's design as a well-educated character with high social status, which is again all clearly represented within the story of the game. Now moving along even her name Sotheby is also a reference to Sotheby auction house that began in 1744 with over 7 billion dollars in assets which if we think about the game's perspective it's synonymous to just how rich Sotheby's family is in the game and even the design choices of her dress is fascinating 
So during the 20s in the United States, or better known as the Roaring 20s, fashion for women began to shift from old Victorian style outfits with corsets and big bottoms during the Edwardian era into dresses that were more straight, sleeveless, and low cut, which was called the flapper fashion at the time, which is really awesome because this contrast in outfits is also showcased during the main story of the game between Sotheby and Schneider within the same era of the 1920s. And of course, it doesn't end there. It even goes all the way back to the medieval period, which was showcased in a character called a knight. To be honest, I initially had no idea where to even start my research. Sure, it's basically a ghost of what looks like a knight for all intents and purposes, but from what era and what was the lore behind this character? So to help me in my journey of uncovering the identity of this character, I started looking for some clues. Just looking around within the character's profile, I noticed a peculiar text engraved on the sword. Arana or something. Then I was filtering through the voice lines of a knight, which gave me a better hint that it knew French. Bonjour. And probably the most crucial hint of all, one of the skills, I guess the ultimate skill of a knight, is named after AD 778. So just like anyone with absolutely no clue, I googled it. France, sword, AD 778. And there it was, Song of Roland and the Battle of Rantsubu Pass. Long story short, this character named a knight essentially depicts a knight named Roland during the reign of King Charlemagne in the Frankish kingdom. And Roland ultimately dies during the Battle of Rantsubu Pass in the year 778. And the story has become somewhat of a legend and has been passed down to become basically an epic poem in French literature, which basically outlines the heroic self-sacrifice of Roland stemming from royalty and duty, wielding a legendary sword from the angels called Durandel. And sure enough, upon close inspection, the design of the sword in the game clearly depicts the word Durandel directly. In my honest opinion, on one hand, having so many historical references and so many characters could feel daunting at times. But on the other hand, it's also very enjoyable for me to learn about these things, even as someone who's always slept during the history classes in high school. It felt like a breath of fresh air, because so many characters in the gaming market nowadays tends to only focus on the visual aspects of the character. But in my personal opinion, the character stories and how they are incorporated into the overall game, which ties in with the visual aesthetic makes them so much more enjoyable as a whole and I would like to believe that this is the peak of character designs. I really can't wait to play the game when it officially launches and I want to give a special thank you to Reverse1999 for sponsoring this video because it was really fun researching these topics to learn about different characters that we'll be able to play inside the game. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in trying out the game, make sure to check out my previous video that breaks down this 20th century time travel strategic RPG game and everything that Reverse 1999 has to offer. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.